Hi everybody, in this video we're going to show you how we build a Tori gate for our Japanese themed backyard. Tori gates are traditionally found at Shinto shrines and passing through the gate symbolizes the transition from the worldly to the spiritual. These are examples of the many styles of Tori gates. This last one was used as a model for our gate as I like the simplicity of the design and the five-sided profile of the top beam ends. In Japanese, the vertical columns are called the Heshira. The lower cross beam is the Nuki. The upper cross beam consists of the Shimagi on the bottom and the Kasagi on the top. We'll use these names in the rest of this video. Construction begins with the Heshira vertical columns. Let's first look at how our design was built. We started with drawing the 6 inch diameter of the pole, then drew the lines for our 3 quarter inch lumber pieces. We then mark and measure the width of them. These are then used as a guide for ripping the lumber to size. Our design will use these 14 pieces which will be glued and nail gunned together. Note that our design is hollow, both to save weight and to help in our installation, which you'll see later. Once the glue is cured, we can begin to shape the Hishira using a power plane to remove most of the material. And then we'll finish with the belt sander, which will give us a nicely rounded column. At this point, you'll be glad you invested in power tools, as there's a lot of material to remove. With both Hashira done, we'll move on to the Shimagi and Kasagi. What's most important in our design is getting good curves. Drawing them is easily done using a flexible metal ruler. Simply clamp a block of wood to the lumber, Clamp the ruler to the block and bend the ruler. It will naturally give a gentle curve. The Shimagi is built using nine pieces of lumber that are identical. To make exact copies, I first made a master. Then I marked each one of the eight copies and cut the ends to the proper size on the chop saw. Using the saber saw, I cut the curved tops slightly oversized by about a quarter of an inch. I then clamped the copy to the master and finished making the copies using a flush trim straight bit on the router. These were then glued and nail gunned together. Finally the Kasagi is built. The shape of most of the bottom is identical to the top of the Shimagi, so we'll just copy it. Since the Kasagi extends out from the Shimagi, we do need to draw that by hand. The top has a more accentuated curve, so we'll draw a new one. Construction was similar to the Shimagi, except for the sloping top, which was made with progressively taller pieces going towards the center. I used the belt sander to get the final shape. To install the gate, we'll use a couple of steel angle irons, separated by a block of wood for each column. These are sized to fit the hollow openings in the Hishira. We'll also drill holes in the steel to screw in threaded rods, which will function like rebar when they're set into the concrete pads. Since our location is under a grove of redwood trees, there are a lot of roots that would interfere with a typical deep foundation, so we'll make a wide, flat concrete pad. To ensure that the columns are parallel, vertical, and properly spaced, I built a frame and bolted the steel to it. We then mixed and poured the concrete and set the steel assemblies in place. After the concrete had cured, the two Hashira were set in place. Note that there are no screws or other fasteners holding it in place. Assembly was completed by sliding the Nuki through the holes and securing with the wedges. Then the Shimagi was screwed into the Hashira columns and the Kasagi screwed into the Shimagi. Then it was time for finished painting and the project was complete. In our next video, I'll show you how we decorated the area with bamboo fencing and lighting. See you then! Mm -hmm. 